In my last tutorial, I created a weather station using Arduino and NodeMCU using DHT11 or DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor and displayed it using an OLED display. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a peg box using the same board but with a little bit of twist. In this setup, I'm going to send the temperature and humidity readings to a Raspberry Pi based home server and store it in a MySQL database. The data can then be viewed using PHP and Google charts on a mobile phone or a PC connected to the home network. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. Talking about the quality, it's absolutely mind blowing. The setup is very simple. The temperature and humidity sensor sends the collected data to the Node MCU on pin number D3. Node MCU then sends the data over Wi Fi to the Raspberry Pi, which is then saved in the MySQL database. The yellow LED, which is the status indicator, flashes every second and is connected to pin number D6 of the Node MCU. The blue LED connected to pin number D5 lights up when Node MCU sends the temperature and humidity readings to the database. If you are planning to install this box somewhere inside your house then you can also add an OLED display and display the readings on it. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. There are three breakout board in this 100 cm by 100 cm assembly. Each board can be used with either Arduino or Node MCU and DHT11 or DHT22 sensor or sensor module. The board can be used with either Node MCU or Arduino Nano. Temperature and humidity readings can be collected using either DHT11 or DHT22 module or by using one of these sensors with a 10K resistor. The bottom section of the board is for the OLED display. The attached Gerber is a bit different from what you see on screen. I made a bit of modification in the final version and moved the sensor a bit far from the microcontrollers. Let's start by soldering the female pin headers to the board. The pin headers will house the Node MCU in it. Next, let's sort a few more pin headers for the LEDs, DHT11 sensor and the OLED display. Before installing the circuit in the peg box, let's hook up the OLED display and make sure everything works as expected. Boom, nailed it. The code starts by including all the libraries and by defining all the constants and variables that will be used throughout the program. Then there are two functions send IML live and send temperature and humidity which sends heartbeat and the data read from the temperature and humidity sensor to the database server. The read DHT sensor function reads the data from the DHT11 or the DHT22 sensor. In the setup section, we first set up the Wi-Fi and then send the send I am alive message to the server advising that I am back up and running. Then in the loop section, the microcontroller sends a heartbeat every minute using the send I am alive function. And if the time elapses, it sends the humidity and temperature reading using the send temperature and humidity function. The white LED flashes every second and the blue LED turns on when the device sends the temperature and humidity data to the database server. So the data sent by the Node MCU over Wi-Fi is saved in the MySQL database hosted on the Raspberry Pi 4. Here you can see the microcontroller sends the data every 30 minutes which is then saved in the MySQL database. The data saved on the Pi's MySQL database can then be used to generate various types of graphs either by using Google Charts or any other third party application. It totally depends on how you want to present your data. Now let's look at the design of the peg box. Using freely available pallet planks, I designed the body of the box. The pallet planks I'm using are 160 by 9 by 2 cm in length, width and thickness. So the rest of the measurements will be based on that. The top bit of the peg box will house the microcontroller and the sensors in it. Putting them on the top prevents the electronics from adverse climatic conditions. The back bit will stick to the wall and hence we do not need to cover it up. You can either put the pegs straight in the front bin or throw it to the top bit from where it will slide down to the front bin. The sliding design with an opening in the front will prevent the rainwater from accumulating inside the bin. The mechanism will keep the bin dry throughout the year. Using two hammers, I'm dismantling the pallet. My aim is to reuse all the nails used in building this pallet so that I can use them in building my project. After that, I sanded the pallet planks to give them a nice and smooth texture. 
Then using a chop saw or a hand saw, I extracted all the pieces of wood required for building my project. As mentioned earlier, my pallet planks are 9cm wide and hence all the on-screen measurements are based on that. Using wood glue, I'm joining all the pallet planks used in making the box. I got a bit too excited and I accidentally deleted one of my recordings. So I'm using 3D animation to show you guys how I joined the two sides of the box. I used plywood board to create the base of the bin. I glued few cylindrical wooden sticks on the roof of the box. To be very frank, these sticks actually changed the entire outlook of the peg box. Since my aim is to install the peg box outside the house, I have to make sure that I apply multiple coats of paint on the box to avoid the pallet wood from rotting. I applied three coats of paint on the entire setup and insulated all the holes that I found using wooden putty. So this is how it looks like. The electronics bit will stay hidden under the roof of the box. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll obviously insulate them and make them weatherproof before installing them on the wall. Now the next thing you need to do is to find a spot where you want to install this unit. I'm using metal frame hangers to hang it to the wall. Place the unit against the wall and using pencil, mark the points where you want to drill the holes. Now using a hammer drill, drill the holes to the wall. Then put the wall plugs in the wall and then using a screwdriver install the screws. Alright, so that's it. This unit is now all set to hold all my pegs in it. So this is how my final setup looks like. Do comment and let me know if there are any scopes of improvement. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.